ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Suvlaki Wraith. Uh, I am your host, the uh, Duder of Outer, uh, the Duke of Outer Kekistan, uh, and with me, as always, is uh, His Royal Highness, the Dude. The Dude vibes. So we're here at Slovakia Ring, as Byron alluded to. And we are here for the shakedown round of the ESR WTCR series. These are front wheel drive touring cars, which is an interesting change of fare. And there you have the notes on the Slovakia ring. 30 degree track temperature today, 19 degree, degree air temperature. Rather chilly day, actually, for, uh, for a race. And we have a number of brands here today that you may or may not be familiar with. We got Honda, as demonstrated by Serge Hendricks in the lovely Red Devil. Uh, livery. We have got Alfa Romeo, which uh, Mike Stoffmill has uh, humbled with his with his presence. We have Cupra. We have Hyundai. We have Audi. We have VW Volkswagen, of course. Uh, we have another one there that I'm not quite able to make out uh, because it's a little small on the screen. Hopefully, we get somebody up and I can instantly tell you what brand that is. I'm trying to remember what brand I'm I'm missing just from my rundown, because uh, uh, I do follow WTCR. Interesting series. There is the That's Liam Curtin and the Cupra. Uh, oh, it's the Lincoln Co's, uh, which are kind of like Volvo, almost, but not. Well, they are Volvo, but they're owned by a Chinese company now with a new name. That's uh, That's what that is. So Mike Stopmill will start on pole ahead of the Gunrunners, Zarai Garunian and Brody Steen. Uh, newcomer, or at least newcomer to me, Ezekiel Chermanando, Luciano Echazo, Richard Roche, Liam Curtin, Sean Kenny, Lachlan Nichols, and Gerardo Davel. Your top ten. couple other newcomers I see. David Sloot is a newcomer, along with Cristiano Pinheiro. I believe it's pronounced Slute, and I'm not actually making Slute. a joke there. I think that Martin told me. Oh, okay. Uh, Dennis Johnson is uh, familiar to me, but I can't quite place it, so might be a newcomer or might be somebody who's just been away for a while. Not a lot of livery variety in the WTCR, so that might be the only problem here. Uh, for example, all the Lincoln Co's are that yellow and blue Swedish flag, basically. <laughs> Uh, we do apparently have a three-minute warm-up here to go. So there is one of the Hyundais of Richard DeRoche joining the field. I think the Hyundai is considered the strongest of the cars here, but I could be mistaken on that. Get the Hyundais and the low One of the Alfa Romeos going backwards in the pit lane. That's interesting. There's uh, Mike Stopmill out on track there. I think what's going on here is these cars have launch control. Uh, which makes their uh, their launch at the start line a little bit more complicated. So I think what we're seeing is probably a bunch of people doing basically practice starts to make sure that they have the launch control properly handled. I would also recommend launch control. Launch control would be good. Be very useful in a race car, I imagine. So any brand you're uh, you're rooting for here, Byron? Just because you know, yes. These are a little bit more obtainable than normal. <laughs> yes, the Beta Romeo. Oh, well, I mean, Mike Stopmill is driving the Beta Romeo, so even if he wasn't driving, I'd still be cheering for that car. I I'm just, I'm just saying, there's a solid chance it's going to get a good result. <laughs> well, we'll just remove him from the equation and see how everybody else does. Hmm. True. True. There were a couple others up at the top ten, so. Looked like a, I don't think that there was a particular brand pattern, to be honest, other than I didn't see any Volkswagens towards the front, so that might be the the one sort of dead-end brand here today. Ladies and gentlemen, Lachlan, the pit sticker, Nichols. Lachlan, you murdered my car, Nichols. And no, I will never forget. <laughs> Gerardo Delval in the Lincoln Co. I do think that's one of the the neater looking cars. It's uh, one of the more saloonish uh, cars in this field. We got a mix of saloon and hatchback here today. A 
the leg it goes a little bit kind of in the middle like it's not it like the the rear is not quite long enough for a proper saloon but it's also definitely not a hatchback that is a proper hatchback there the honda civic what about a brand's hatchback Oh, we better have Brands Hatch on the schedule. I mean, we're racing hatchbacks, and we're, we better have <laughs> better Brands Hatch on the schedule. <laughs> Probably don't, because unfortunately, in a race room, there's only the Brands Hatch indie layout, which is super short, um, is the problem. And we don't have the full GP layout. Josiah Jerome in the Volkswagen. Must say that Josiah Jerome's like lackluster qualifying does lead me to believe that that Volkswagen just isn't very strong. And that's why there's none of them at the front, but we'll have to see if that pays out or plays out. Also, we'll have to see if there are some notable drivers in the Volkswagen who are out of position, because that would perhaps indicate uh, a certain deficiency within the car. Well, you know, them side wheel drive cars are a little weird. <laughs> Wondering if we're missing any of the WTC. I doubt we have any brands missing. Um... While we're loading up here, I might as well pull up the store page. Let's see here. Are we missing any of them? Well, the race is about to start, so I will pull that up. And when we get a moment of silence, I will uh, note if there are any missing. Three. Or not a moment of silence, but a moment of... Oh, already a drive through penalty for John Spriggs. Damn. So somebody did not get their launch control correct, and it is Mike Stockbill leading the way in the Alfa Romeo, which has a very interesting grill, I must say. The kind of diamond-shaped thing going on there. Could we or just triangle. Mr. Spriggs is just highly efficient. Could be, could be. Zerai Garunian in second place, followed by the top Hyundai of Brody Steen. Man, that is loud. I actually had to turn down the video. Cristiano Pinheiro, um, in trouble. <laughs> and then suddenly back into 16th place. I don't know what happened there. Okay, interesting. Martin Edmonds in the Lincoln Co. battling with the Alfa Romeo of Sean Kenny. A classic rivalry here. And Gerardo Del Val in that mix. Actually, a really classic rivalry because if I were to say who are Martin Edmonds' two biggest rivals, they're Sean Kenny and they're Gerardo Del Val. <laughs> And he's got fellow admin John Barker right behind him, so that'll be an interesting section of the grid. Andrew D is in 12th place. Uh, I see a Bosnian flag. Oh, be still, my uh, my Serbian jeans. No, sir. I believe that's a Herzegovina flag. Oh, even worse. <laughs> Sean Kenny in eighth place. Good to see Sean up there. He's had a rough time in ACC lately. Oh, one of the Hondas off. I'm looking for Volkswagens. Uh, I see Pinheiro. I see Ratchkasi. I have no idea to say that name. <laughs> um, and I see Josiah Jerome. And Wayne Hutchison way down in the order. As well as Michelle Kral. So, yeah, maybe the Volkswagen just not a great car around here. Martin Edmonds on the tail of Gerardo Deval, Lachlan Nichols in the Honda also ahead of them there, and Sean Kenny in the Alfa Romeo has climbed up spot to seventh. There is Martin Edmonds trying to get in the inside of fellow Lincoln Co. driver, the one, the only Gerardo Deval. And one of the Coopers off the track there we saw briefly. Cherman, uh, let's see here, Cherminando? Cherminando? I'm going to go with that. Trying to get around the outside of Luciano Ichazo, but Ichazo holds on to it in the Cubra. Maybe we can do an ABBA, uh, an ABBA parody, something about, uh, they got a song called Fernando, you could go with oh. Germanando. Germanando would work for that. I don't remember the lyrics, but I can hear part of the like r rhythm in my head right now. Mm. My parents John's listened to a lot of disco when I was young. Well, I mean, fair enough. We we all we all are somewhat imprinted by our parents' choice in music, uh, which led to me being imprinted by every type of music. Because my dad is insane. <laughs> what is the dance quiz? Martin Edmonds getting side by side with Lachlan Nichols. Lachlan's being shuffled back. He was up in seventh place and is now down to tenth. So 
Looks like the uh, the New Zealander might be having, or is he Aussie or New Zealander? That's an Australian flag he's got there, isn't it? He's from Old Zealand. He's got the same flag as Brody Steen, who I know races under the Australian flag. So, yeah, we're gonna go with that. Yeah, New Zealand's got I think more stars on it. Uh, well, it's also it? got the it's also got the red where the white is uh, in the in the stars. Wow. As John Spriggs and Josiah Jerome appear to have come to blows. And Josiah may be coming off the worst of that. Martin Edmonds. I think jo I think Josiah may have pulled the plug. Looks like the front wheel drives just don't suit him. Martin Edmonds is carving his way through the field, getting past Gerardo Daval there for eighth place. So Lachlan Nichols and now Gerardo in just uh, probably one lap time because this is a long, long lap. Uh, more than two minutes this lap uh, around the Slovakia ring. We have a multi-race affair today, so there will be chances to strike back. And on the 15th race, they're going to do a triple reverse Whoa, grid. Oh, Martin Edmonds is wide. I wonder Listen, if, Mar I wonder if Martin... Down, hadn't had a chance to work out. Can't I mean, it, it, <laughs> it has to be said, Martin Edmonds is driving a front-wheel drive car. And, oh, somebody disappeared there. Uh, somebody did vanish. I don't know who that was. I've been, I see I see a Volkswagen in the pits. It might have been Josiah Jerome that vanished. But, um... So front-wheel drive cars, unlike our usual fare, which is rear-wheel drive, will wear the front tires out very, very quickly. Oh, Zachary good. Wolf recovering from enough. Uh, because you have the power and the steering going through the same set of tires. So the back tires are doing very little on these cars. Uh, and that means that if you are bad at managing your tires, it's going to get worse. <laughs> and we know, we know the great joke about Martin Edmonds that is not really a joke, is he'll make those tires scream. <laughs> Martin Edmonds, a.k.a. the Tireminator. Mm -hmm. Sarai Garunian keeping up with Mike Stockmill, keeping him company at the front. Stockmill still leading for the Alfa Romeo from the Lincoln Co. And then it is Brody Steen, Luciano Ichazo, and uh, Shermanando, or, or Shermanando, whichever it is. Uh, top five has only one duplicate, two Lincoln Co's in the top five, but otherwise, uh, unique brands. We have a Honda, a or no, a Hyundai, a Cupra, and an Alfa Romeo in there. No Hondas. Top Honda is in eighth place. That is Lachlan Nichols. Another Alfa Romeo doing pretty well though is Sean Kenny in sixth place. He's on the back of Sherman Ando, and behind him it's Gerardo Delval and Lachlan Nichols, Martin Edmonds, John Barker, Andrew D. Dennis Johnston, Steve Davidson, all in a very tight pack. There is the Audi of Dennis Johnston, one of the few Audis in the field. Not a popular car in WCCR in general, so not terribly surprised that it's not uh, particularly used here today. Luciano Echazo in the great Tom Cornell car. Tom Cornell's a funny guy. He, uh, he was... Uh, on WTCC, the series for like a long time, which is the World Touring Car Championship, which has become WTCR, which is World Touring World Touring Car or World Touring Cup Racing or so I can't remember what it what, what it actually stands for, but it's like a cheaper version of WTCC, basically cutting costs to allow more teams to make the grid. World Sauntering Goblet. <laughs> Um, but Tom Cornell is the one who famously was involved in the Sabine Schmidt trailer for the Nord, uh, for the uh, Nordschleife. Uh, he was the one going, nah, she was here last year. She did, she did not do too well. She wouldn't possibly be back for another run. And then when the camera pans over to show her walking through the pit lane, he just goes, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Kenny up on the tail of uh, Sherman Ando, still trying to get in that top five. Ichazo on the tail of Brody Steen. Just seeing who am I? There's a specific Hyundai livery that I really like, but I haven't seen anybody actually running it. So my, my cheering interests are on hold until I see that car. <laughs> Although the Red Devil Hondas are also very nice, so I'll probably give them some love. Also the Red, Red Devil, Devil. Club. Also the Red Devil. I mean, come on. Whoa! Listen to those tires squeal. 
Sean Kenny fighting the car through there. I'm sorry I can't really give like uh, comments on turns here, but the I can't find a decent Slovakia ring track map to refer to. And number two, the Slovakia ring is hard to figure out where you are on it just by looking at it from the outside. I mean, it's definitely something you do in the car. You develop a, a feel for like turn one, turn two, turn three and so on. But from the outside, it's. Actually kind of hard as Martin Edmonds gets up the inside of Gerardo Delval. This battle for Lincoln Co.'s supremacy and 8th place continues. And it looks like Delval has hung on this time. Gentlemen, I need you to settle down and go chase down Lachlan Nichols because he's up in 7th place. And we know I'm not cheering for Lachlan. Hunt him like a beast and Michael will pay you handsomely in rather lightly fried put, fish fillets. Put him in the wall. <laughs> Uh, I must say, Richard DeRoche down in 16th place. He's had a rough time. We haven't really said anything about him, but he's racing against uh, Scott Nick. And uh, I'm sorry, I don't know your first name, but your last name is Marquez. And you're Portuguese, so probably Santiago. an interesting first name. No, that'd be Spanish. Uh, why? Because Santiago is a very Spanish name, not a very Portuguese name. That seems kind of racist. It's well, it'd be nationalistic, but not not racist. But yeah. You're saying that if I had a kid, I couldn't name him Mpumbe? Well, you can name him whatever you want. I'm just saying. <laughs> the likelihood is not really there as uh, Dennis Johnston or Johnson moving into the top ten, passing John Barker there in the Audi on Honda violence. Luciano still trying to get up onto that podium, but we haven't really seen a solid attempt from the Cooper driver yet. Sean Kenny, 6th place, Alfa Romeo. Steve Davidson in the Alfa Romeo moving up into 11th, overtaking... Oh, it looks like John Barker might have made a mistake because he lost a spot to Davidson and to Andrew D. So, maybe a mistake for... Oh! That is Wayne Hutchison going very slowly in the Volkswagen. Dropping through the order. John Spriggs on a charge, by the way, up to 23rd place. I think that'll probably be 22nd at some point. Looks like we've lost Liam Curtin, as well as Josiah Jerome from the festivities, uh, as well as Cristiano Pinheiro, Mauricio Delgado, and uh, Obradovich, first name unknown. Don't know you. Let's see, B. Hmm. Let me see, B. B and Serbian. That's not his purse. B and Serbian. Could be Bakhtin. Could be Bliagovic. Could be, Bo could be Bojan, Bratislav. Bratwurst. Not Bratwurst. That, that would be unlikely. Uh, Bronco? Bojangles. Not, not Bojangles. Someday it'll actually be a Bojangles, but I, I suspect Beauregard. Not, this, not, not this game. No, not Beauregard. That's more like French or British. Sean Kenny looking down the inside. Nothing doing there. Good to see some new names on the grid. Always always nice. Oh, Gerardo diving down the inside of Martin Edmonds. And when I say diving down, I mean Martin Edmonds went super wide and uh, loses the spot. You can always count on a good battle. Oh, somebody's off the track. That is Serge Hendricks rejoining. So, bad news for the Dutch Honda man. Also, you're Dutch and not driving Tom Cornell's car? Serge, you disappoint me. You will be exiled to Belgium immediately. Tom Cornell is a very regarded Dutch driver. And uh, Michelle or Michael Kral, I've not gotten an answer as to how it's said, because I know the Germans kind of go both ways. And I know that's an American flag, so it's probably Michael Kral. German heritage, I imagine, from the last name. Depends if he is in the Alsace and Lorraine area or not. <laughs> the Alsatian Sensation Part 2. Sean Kenny still running in a solid sixth place for the Alfa Romeo crew. I do like that livery that the Alfa Romeo sports, the, you know, green, red, white livery. Italian flag livery, basically. It is the Beta Romeo. It is the Beta Romeo. Chock full of eagle. 
<laughs> Has the most eagle of all these cars, that's for sure. No dog food for Victor tonight. Stuff me a watch, he's seven laps ahead of everybody, my goodness. It's only actually, he's actually stunningly only 1.6 seconds up. Uh, Zarai Garunian keeping him honest. Either that or he's just not, like, super pushing the car. Feel free to leave in the comments below, Mike. Are you letting uh, Zarai stick with you? Or is this uh, is this actually uh, something that we'll see a lot more of in this series? Maybe uh, front-wheel drive cars are not Mike Stockmill's thing. Which, I mean, let that sink in for a moment. I'm suggesting that they might not be his thing while he is still winning. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, it's not like we don't have good drivers here today. I mean, Gunrunner, Brody Steen, Luciano Achazo, Sean Kenny, Martin Edmonds, Gerardo Duval, Andrew D, we've uh, Richard Roche. We've got the top end of ESR here. Uh, I mean, there are obviously some 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 absences. Maxi Lentini, who's joining the Enduro Grid, is not here today. He's someone who has been able to take the fight to Stop Mill. Uh, no Andrew Burke. So I mean, not the complete. Uh, s selection, uh, no Chris Johnston, no uh, no Paul Riccobeni, but you know, a very very solid grid, and uh, Stop Mill is uh, still doing his thing. <laughs> it's running down to the last five minutes here of race number one. Or I'm assuming this is a multi-race format because this is another hour to the video. <laughs> no, this is it. We just recorded a bunch of uh, extra practice at the end. Unless <laughs> Martin just let the recording run forever, there better be additional. There better be additional races. <laughs> Luciano Chazzo looking for that podium against Brody Steen. Nothing coming of it, of it so far. Hyundai versus Cupra. Cooper, of course, the performance brand of the Seat brand, which is an offshoot of Audi and Volkswagen. Well, she. By the way, so is Skoda. The people who make the tanks? They did make tanks back in World War II, yes. Sean Kenny looking down the inside. Really, most of the uh, the tank makers are actually just car makers now. I mean, Mercedes Benz was involved in the business there, Porsche built some tanks. There is a, there there was a tank destroyer called the Ferdinand. Mm-hmm. Built by Porsche. It was not named after the guy from Lamborghini. No, no. I don't think I can't remember Lamborghini being involved in any military innovations in World War II. Yeah, but even making tractors tended to lead to making tanks. <laughs> That's fair. John Kenny still trying to chase down Sherman Endo, as is Luciano Echazza. Twenty-five cars appear to still be running down to Zach Wolf. As we continue on here. Dennis Johnson. I know I know that name, but I can't place it, so. He could have been somebody who was with the ESR some time ago and has returned for this series, and if so... It's probably back. a sports dude. Baseball player. Um, maybe. Possible. As we approach the... Probably about two laps to go at this point. Martin Edmonds has slipped out of the top 10 and is now chasing Andrew D in the Cupra. I imagine Martin's tires are a fine, or at least the front ones, are a fine paste at this point. There's another one we could do that's an Abba covers. Supra, Cupra, lights are running, flashing. <laughs> Actually, Abba made an appearance on the top 10 uh, Formula 1 countdown today. Um, oh, really? They do kind of like a, every so often like a top 10 insert thing. And this was top 10 weird non-F1 careers that F1 drivers had. And Slim Borgid, a driver back in the day, uh, was the session drummer for ABBA. 
Mm, very nice. And an F1 driver. And also a champion truck driver. As that was finally what he actually got some trophies in. Gerardo Del Valle, trailed by Dennis Johnson, battle for 8th place. Um... I don't think that there were any other real highlights uh, on the list, particularly, to be honest. Um, like, there was Farmer, Banker... Uh, Nigel Mansell apparently did just about anything, and apparently... Oh, hang on. As uh, Gerardo Daval goes wide, and that gives 8th place to Dennis Johnson. Professional noob skydiver. Actually, I guess probably the most interesting one was Nigel Mansell during his F1 career was actually a volunteer co constable on the Isle of Man. Yeah, so interesting. just just imagine that, getting pulled over by Nigel Mansell during his F1 career. <laughs> Do you know how fast you were going? Do you have any idea how fast you were going? <laughs> um, Richard DeRoche climbing through the field in the 13th place with a, uh, with a debonair move around the outside of one of the Alfa Romeos. That was uh, Steve Davidson, I do believe Now on the tail of the Honda of John Barker. A, uh, another rather no notable... Oh, there's the livery I like. Richard Roche sporting the uh, the red Hyundai livery. So go, Richard, go! A little bit of contact there with John Barker, but I think uh, I think he got around the outside fairly well. Uh, touring cars are notably higher in contact than most of the racing we cover. Uh, there's a great deal of allowance for shoving and bumping in the touring car world. I support this course of action. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, th I think you're actually going to enjoy the touring cars a lot more than a lot of the other uh, racing we cover. It's a lot more, uh, a lot more physical. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, Alfa Romeo cheer in the stands as Sean Kenny has taken fifth place away from Sherman Endo. In the meantime, John Barker has gotten back past Richard Roche, who's now under attack from Steve Davidson. Good to see Steve Davidson having a good run. He's been a solid but unspectacular driver, but he's mixing it up with the big boys here today. And I think he may... Nope, this is going to turn into the inside line, and that will probably retain 13th place for the Hyundai of Grande Hicardo, Richard DeRoche. So we can't do the large Richard energy for Scott Nick, but can we still do it for Richard DeRoche? I mean, it depends. Is he, uh, is he a pretty tall guy? I have no idea. Richard, please leave in the comments below. So we got two Alfa Romeos in the top five. So, you know, go Byron's pick. Stoffmill and Kenny. Steve Davidson under tr fam. in trouble from uh, a couple of Lincoln Co's swarming on his back end. That is, uh, do we know what the first name of Mr. Slute is? I do not remember. Let me have a little scroll around because he didn't. I think he rejoined. Martin said he used to be a member. Mm. Him and Scott Nick, anyways, have made their way past Steve Davidson up into 14th and 15th. David. David. Okay. David Slute. Slute. Scott Nick. Or, you know, Dave Slutty, if you want to really. Uh, do know. we have Slute versus uh, Scott Nick here? Interesting. Battle of the Promiscuous People. Steve Davidson on the tail of those two Lincoln Co's who have gotten past him. The checkered flag is out. So Mike Stopmill is your race winner. Um, probably the most common sentence we have spoke on this channel. Put him in the wall. Actually, you're probably right. Oh, there we are. We have our answer on uh, S. Marquez. Simao. Simao Marquez. Who brings it home in 18th place. John Spriggs, despite the drive through penalty, soldiers on. And, uh, I mean, his front end has seen better days. Um, well, how rude. He puts on moisturizer and everything. I, I said it had seen better days. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's not It's not his fault. It's, it's, it's the race's fault. It's it's the children that are wrong. <laughs> uh, Serge Hendricks bringing it across the line in 22nd place. Maverick. Rastikiz. That's what I'm going with. Do you have a different pronunciation for the last name? Uh, no, that looks about right. Rasta, rest of his, rest of his. Yeah, there we go. Could be a little, uh, you know, Slavic with the rest of his. With the rest of his. True, true. It's, uh, Zachary Wolf bringing it across the line in 25th place. He is last place, so we'll be heading on to race two, presumably, here. And I assume there's some kind of uh, reverse grid going on here. 
we'll find out. Race to probably should have probably should have affiliated myself with the rules a little bit before this. You know, I, I am supposed nah. to be the professional one. <laughs> but, nah. I mean, it's but, pretty. Uh, it's called touring car, right? They they are in cars and they tour around. It's right, really so straightforward. We, so we definitely have a second race here, at least, because we got the warm up going here. Uh, I recommend uh, John Spriggs might want to go out there and try it as launch control, so he doesn't get a penalty again. Probably be ideal. You boy, stuff, Mike Meal. Stop, Mike Meal. <laughs> uh, Mike Cornmeal. Just looking up an injury report for my uh, my basketball fantasy team. They're all injured because you drafted nobody except uh, injury prone people. I actually have had a ridiculous amount of injuries. Uh, I just lost uh, Mitchell Robinson. Uh, I lost TJ Ford, Evan Fournier, and DeAndre Hunter for like significant chunks of the season. DeAndre Hopkins? To the point where I, and you only have two injury repla injury spots, so I had to release TJ Ford and DeAndre Hunter, and someone picked up TJ Ford despite the fact that he's injured, which is an interesting move. <laughs> it reminds me of those uh, billboard memes. It's like, are you injured? Good, fuck you, injured piece of shit. <laughs> Focusing in on Mike Stop. This is the one thing I don't overly like about the uh, the touring cars is you got the name of the actual driver on the car. I don't know. It just kind of breaks it. That uh, Mike Stop is driving the Kevin Chacon car. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. And uh, Serge Hendricks is driving the Attila Tashi car, Hungarian driver, who is, I believe, a big part of that uh, that sponsorship deal with the. With the with the hell energy drink, something from Hungary named Attila. Not surprised. Not surprising. <laughs> Interesting young driver might might actually never run it being the best Hungarian driver of all time. Not that that really means a ton because, I mean, right now we're sitting on that being like Norby Miklish, which is not super impressive. I mean, you're really going to accept the media lies that Schumacher's actually from Germany? Come on, man. I thought you were smarter than that. The only Hungarian F1 driver that comes to mind was a brief dalliance of Zolt Baumgartner in F1. Zoltan! He raced for Jordan for a hot second and then for Minardi for a full season. And then Pippin. Uh, then I have no idea what he's done, actually. <laughs> Career just kind of died after that. Race for Jordan and Minardi and Pippin and then Horace Grant. <laughs> Horace actually, Grant, I'm most gonna look underrated it up. member of that Bulls team, I think. I mean... <sighs> That's a tough call. Most, un I'm going to go with Ron Harper, honestly, is the most underrated. That's fair. Ron Harper was key to that team's success, and he... According to Wikipedia, Zolt Baumgartner apparently just didn't do anything. Um, he did a reserve drive role for the Minardi Team USA in cart... Uh, and then apparently did some Super League Formula races for... Or as a test driver for Tottenham Hotspurs FC. He just drove out onto the field and ran over the opposition. And yes, Tottenham Hotspurs is a soccer team. Uh, the Super the Super Formula League was literally cars representing soccer teams. It was well, interesting. an intriguing idea. Did they put guns on the Arsenal car? They did not. <laughs> they should have. <laughs> Can you really call yourself Arsenal if you don't All come right, to work? So script? John Barker is starting on pole. So it looks like uh, reverse get grid top twelve uh, is my guess here. So Barker you only will lead know us that away. Stop Mills in twelfth. Uh, well, actually, I'm more that John Barker was on pole and he finished twelfth. Wow! Here man. we go. It's a lot of smoke back there. There's a lot of smoke. You get a lot of smoke off of these ones. John Barker leads the way down to the turn one. We focus on Gerardo Delval, who is in fourth place behind Martin Edmonds and Andrew D. And we are more or less in order at the top of the field. Where is Mike Stoppel? He's dropped a spot. Wow. 
Not something we need to see a lot of. There is a flickering Cooper in the background, so one of the Coopers may vanish here. That's... If I had to guess, I'm going to say that it's Samal Marquez who is dropping dropping through the field. Andrew, the D stands for Dortmunder. Lachlan Nichols in fifth place, and I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry about it because he's just now in fifth place. He is getting dropped. Overtaken there by Sherman Endo. Next up, Sean Kinney. Go Shermanator. Oh, a lot of smoke there. A lot of smoke. Didn't see the rea the results of it. But somebody at the front got a little sideways. And Martin Edmonds has taken the lead. Again? John Barker, Andrew D, second and third. Then it's Delval. Lachlan Nichols has gotten back past Shermanando. Sean Kenny. Brody Steen. Luciano Echazza. Zarai Garunian. Mike Stobmill. And Dennis Johnson. Your top 12. And in theory, sufficiently uh, sized Johnson. And in theory, the reverse grid for race number three, because it looks like we're gonna have a third race here today. Dennis the Girth Certificate Johnson. <laughs> That's a good one. Sherman Ando in seventh place, working against Sean Kenny. Kenny's gotten past him. Lachlan Nichols has gotten past him. So Sherman Ando in a little bit of a free fall right now. Plenty of time to come back from that though. Trying to get down the inside of Sean Kenny. No can do at the moment. Need more lady racers so I can come up with cool lady racer names. I think we really just have Rochelle these days. Well, then everybody else needs to get off the ass. What Rochelle, name? Rochelle just brought a top 10 home in the uh, GT Challenge Series Oops. yesterday doing quite well. Gerardo Delval slides down to fifth place behind Lachlan Nichols. Lachlan's on a charge, Byron. I don't I don't feel good about this. I don't feel good about this at all. Uh, it's not, it's going to be fine. They're going to go around near the pits. He's going to do something bad, and then he's going to get ejected. <laughs> Didn't do that in the first race. You led me to believe what happened in race one. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I kid. I kid. Lachlan is a perfectly safe driver as long as you're not pitting in front of him. In which case, get ready for an anal impact. <laughs> wow, graphic. That's my job. I, I mean, it, it's meant to be graphic. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm scarred by it for life. <laughs> oh, contact! It was Lachlan Nichols getting to the back of uh, Andrew D. You were saying? Um, might not have been him, though. Could be but we're assuming it is. It was Andrew D. who got rear ended. No, it wasn't Andrew D. who got rear ended. Was that a lap car already? It was definitely a Cupra. And there are no Coopers up there except Andrew D., but he is still. In oh, maybe Yachaza? I don't know. Tough call. Stuff now, uh, watch. He's up to 8th place. He is up to 8th place. John Barker's next on his list. Martin Edmonds leads the way from Andrew D. Lachlan Nichols is in third, followed by Sean Kenny and Gerardo Delval. Lachlan going to the inside of Andrew D. Looking for second place. Trying to break up the Canadian 1-2. John up the wrong tree, Barker. Barker having a rough day. Started on pole and has slid back to seventh place. Gunrunner taking DeRoche for 11th place. And Lachlan is going to break up that 1-2, I think. No, Andrew D was not letting it go. Holding it on the outside in that Cupra. But you got to think Lachlan's got it here. He's got the inside line for next turn. And in fact, this may bring the Alfa Romeo Sean Kenny into play. And indeed, Lachlan Nichols taking second place for Honda. One of the other Hondas, Serge Hendricks wandering across the, uh, the off-track area. Dropping to last place. Looks like we might have lost Marquez. I think we should get uh, one of the UFC commentators to support a racing team. Mm. And then we could start making Anik Honda jokes. Mm. My Anik Honda don't. 
<laughs> Gerardo DelVal, by the way, up in the third place. Him and Brody Steen both getting past uh, Andrew D. And Sean Kenny. Sean Kenny dropping back to sixth place. Wow. Mike Stopmill in seventh. John Barker. Gunrunner. DeRoche, Shermanando, and Slute, your top 12. That would be the reverse grid for race number three, I imagine. Slute, 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 God dang it. With the fumbling of the words. Richard DeRoche. Getting side by side with one of the Lincoln Co's. That would be Shermanando. Battle for 10th place. I do like that Luke Coyle livery that he's sport. Very nice. A couple of really nice liveries, actually. I like I like the the the, the Hell's uh, Energy Drink uh, Hondas. Both the uh, the high end days are pretty nice. The All Ankle Honda is a classic livery in the racing world. Brody Steen looking to get through here, fighting with uh, Gerardo Daval. Yeah, that's who I need to talk to. Uh, who does the custom liveries? Is it Sean? Justin Swan. No, there was somebody that we we had a series. And, uh, I, th I want to say it was oh, Sean. Uh, it was not Sean. Uh, wasn't it Scott Nick? I don't think so. I could be wrong about that. Somebody was doing custom liveries and they wanted inspiration, so I showed them like, the defunct NHL team list. And mm. Get me a Hartford Whaler livery. I'm, 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 uh, well, I'm there was a California Golden Seals one. No one wanted it. Golden Seals would be... Eh, I wouldn't say no to it, but I, I think... Oh, Mike Stopmill getting hip-checked. Andrew D, I think, got messed up more than anyone else, though. <laughs> it's up in seventh place. Stopmill up to fifth. Sean Kenny up to sixth. Somebody giving the hip-check to Mike Stopmill, and he just didn't care. Just kept going. Can you stop? Won't stop. Andrew D now running into trouble with Zarai Garanian. The Lincoln Co. trying to come through. And he will get through. Dropping the PWR liveried Andrew D down to 8th place. I hadn't noticed that James Butler's in this race. That's a bit weird. Normally, there's a lot of action around James. Mikey Stop Mill on the tail. Brody Steen. Let's see what he has to say to Brody Steen. Because Brody Steen, of course, won the, uh, the most recent ESR series. Uh, which Mike Stop Mill partially competed in, but not the whole way. So you wonder, does Stop Mill say, yeah, yeah, um, how's that trophy feel? You, you enjoying that trophy? Because <laughs> you're not getting another one. <laughs> They're both in the slipstream of Gerardo Delval there, so we might see Stop Mill get a podium here. To the inside goes Stop Mill, but Brody Steen, I think, has that covered off. And up ahead of them is the Honda of Lachlan Nichols. Either that or it's somebody falling down a lap. This is the one problem here is there's a lot of repeat liveries. So it's going to be a lot of that should be this guy, but I don't actually know. As uh, Zerai Garunian getting up the inside of Sean Kenny, but Kenny holds it and retains sixth place. But the gun runner, I think, has got him now. Yeah. Sean went way too late to that corner. Stop oh, Mill's uh, still at the back of this battle for second. Jesse. Jesse was the Ah, uh, Hampton Races. Yeah, there you go. I need to get in contact with him. He could definitely do an Anaconda. Sadly, wouldn't work for this game because they do not allow custom liveries in Race Room. Mostly because they make you buy the liveries. So, you know. Yeah, well. <laughs> There you go. But it's a thought. We can, well, Nido, we can at least get it created Nido and Vili. put it up on the internet. Rejoining from something there, the Bosnian driver back in 20th place. Wonder if that's the first Bosnian driver we've had in ESR. 
Mike Stoppill is trying to get up there, but he, he just is being fought off with, for all he's worth by Brody Steam right now, and it's actually letting other people catch up. We got the Gunrunner and Sean Kenny almost on the back of this fight for second place now. Actually, even Andrew D in eighth place is not too far back. Stop Mill looking down the inside. But does not commit. But that is Del Val getting very, very wide. And Brody Steen up the inside. Stop Mill looking for a two for one. We head to the start finish line. Could get some three wide action here. It is still Del Val, followed by Steen, followed by Stop Mill. No change in position, although things got very feisty there for a second. This is really playing in the hands of Lachlan Nickel. Stop, Bill gets around Brody Steen. He's up to fourth place. For now. Goes a little bit wide. Steen is not able to go back past him, though. And one of the Lincoln Co's, that is Gunrunner, Zarai Garunian, up into fifth place, at least for now. I'm looking for a real awesome chain reaction pit maneuver. So if you do it right, you can push them all in together and pit maneuver everybody to the top <laughs> ten easily. Not right now. The top ten's a little spread out, but everyone from about second to seventh, yeah. <laughs> Andrew D could make your dreams come true. Stop Bill up to third as he climbs past Gerardo Delval. So he's at the front of this little pack here and has got the Honda of Lachlan Nichols in his sights. Martin Edmonds is still up in front, by the way. We seem said very little about the race leader. Sarai Garunian trying to find his way past Gerardo, trying to keep with... Mike Stopmill, but nothing happening at the moment. I will say this for young Martin Edmondchuk. He's still got tires. Still has tires. But he's got a couple laps to go. <laughs> uh, getting something going on here further back. Well, we're focused on Sean Kenny, but we can't even see him. There he is in the Alfa Romeo. The Minqua, the Mike Wing car. car who is a Chinese driver of little talent. I should be interesting if I can actually name all the drivers for the cars in real life. There's Yvonne Muller that we're looking at his car right now. Can you name every driver? What, in WT? Oh, somebody no, off there. Every driver. Scott Nick off. Well, definitely not every driver. Scott Nick off the track. Brody Steen hanging on to sixth place. That'll be something I'll do when I when I when we're when we get to like a, a little bit of a boring part of the race to be like, this is driven by this driver. <laughs> no, you have to name every driver that has ever driven. That's not happening, I told you. All drivers. Uh, one of the Lincoln goes off the track. That is Sherman Ando off the track. That's a big. That's a big moment. Stop, Bill, bumping Blackwood Nichols. Give him, give him the pit maneuver. One of the Coopers off the track. That is Nito Vili, or Neto Vili. I'm not sure. Would that be a Nito or a Neto? I believe it's uh, pronounced Nito Mosquito. Nito Mosquito. Gerardo Delval has been dropped down to 6th place, losing a spot there to Brody Steen. Now he's got Sean Kenny on his tail, as well as Andrew D. And actually, Richard Roche is coming into this fight now in ninth place. All this battling is allowing <clears throat> cars far further back to catch up. Mike Stopmill did get the job done against Lachlan Nichols and is up to 2nd place. Kenny Hunt down the second lead of uh, Martin Edmonds in the last, uh, at a guess, three laps uh, in this race. Sean Kenny still battling with Gerardo Delval. This is letting the Cupra of Andrew D get closer and closer. So is the Fed Bjork or Ted Bjork car of uh, Gerardo Daval and Sean Kenny again in the Minkwak Bog car. What was this about Bjorn Borg? <laughs> Ted Bjork. Swedish uh, uh, Swedish touring car champion. 
WTCC champion, and I don't think he's actually won a WTCR title yet. He might have. Sean Kenny looking for a move. Oh boy. Getting a little squirrely. I heard Javier's going to start up his own uh, series of races, going to call it the WTAC. Mm hmm. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Surprisingly enough, Zerai Garunian has, uh, or no, that's Martin Edmonds fighting. Never mind. Never mind. That is Mike Stoppel taking the lead. I was about to say someone was actually giving Stopmill a hard time, and then I realized, no, no, he's just getting past somebody. <laughs> so Stopmill to the front. Alpha Romeo leads from Lincoln Co., Honda, Lincoln Co., and Hyundai. Your top five. Andrew D. up on the tail of the battle for sixth place between Del Val and Kenny. It is now a three way fight. Soon to be a four-way fight if Richard Roche has anything to say about it. Oh, no! Good save by Kenny. Him and Andrew D coming to blows there. These cars are a lot easier to save than a lot of others. The front-wheel drive allows you a great deal of savability. And Richard Roche is looking to capitalize on Andrew D's contact and might get past him here. And does. Good job, D-Nice. Brody Steen battling with the Gunrunner. Also, Lachlan Nichols overtaking Martin Edmonds, so Martin's tires are done, I imagine. Brody Steen on the tail. In the Lincoln Co. sandwich, actually. We ordered the Lincoln Co. bread with Hyundai meat in between it. So it is Stop Mill starting to run away with it. 1.6 seconds up on Lachlan Nichols. Martin Edmonds is in third, followed by Brody Steen. Then it's Gunrunner, Del Val. Kenny, DeRoche, D, Slutay's up into 10th place ahead of Ichazo and Johnson. John, Sp John Spriggs is having a much better race, number two, up to 13th spot. And we might have a three wide here. Oh, boy. The no, gun... Gosh. No, camera guy, stay with it. God damn it, camera guy. Anyways, they came out of it in the same order, so after all that excitement, no one actually got past. Uh, Sean Kenny looking to get past Gerardo Daval. He's got Richard DeRoche all over his back end now. On board with Richard. And DelVal. Oh, I think DelVal finally gave up the spot as Sean Kenny drives around the outside into sixth place. Andrew D in the mix. And in the background, you can say, see Mr. David Soute coming into play. On board with Richard, a.k.a. Riding with Dick. Riding with Dick. Solid. That's our new onboard name for Richard. <laughs> Welcome to Dick Riding. <laughs> Andrew D. in ninth place. Gerardo DelVal having the job. I wonder if the Lincoln Co. struggle with their tires. I think I think I noticed in... Now, granted, Martin Edmonds is one of the Lincoln Co.'s. So this probably amplifies any issue they have with their tires. But it does seem like all the Lincoln Co.'s have struggled towards the end of Race 1 and Race 2. Except for this one, David Slute. Um So, I don't know. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a tire wear coefficient uh, advantage to some of the other cars. As Slute looks down the inside of... Andrew D looking to pick up ninth place, and he does not get it at this time. Why not? Because he didn't. We're on the last lap. We are on the last lap. So time is running out for anybody who wants to make a move. 
Stop mill now three seconds out ahead of Lachlan Nichols. Brody Steen making it a double Aussie podium at the moment. Has taken that spot off of Sarai Gunrunner. Or pardon, off Martin Edmonds. Gunrunner's also gotten through. So it is now... Alfa Romeo, Honda, Hyundai, Lincoln Co., Lincoln Co., Alfa Romeo, Lincoln Co., Hyundai, Cupra, and Lincoln Co., your top ten. Richard DeRoche. Ooh, very wide run there from Gerardo Delval. Richard has got seventh place. And Andrew D. looking to get through as well in the Cupra. But it looks like DelVal will close the door. Ichazo and Dennis Johnson are starting to catch this group, but I think it's a little too little too late for them. Oh, boy, one of the Coopers off. Not sure who that was. It was one of the Tom Cornell livery Coopers. Could be Nito Vili. Could be Zach Wolf. Could be a super duper Coopera. I think it's one of those two. It's either Vili or Wolf that was off track. If, uh, David Slute! Oh! Forcing his way in there. Just not taking no for an answer from Andrew D. Slute not taking no for an answer Answer from the D. Just let that sink in. So, if one was to be a hardcore fan of one of these cars, would they be a Cupra Trupra? Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Wayne Hutchison looking to get a last-minute spot here over uh, Ezekiel Tremenando. Tremenando had a very poor race number two, and he's going to pay for that with a bad starting position in race number three. finds the inside. I think it was Zach Wolf that was the Coronel liveried Cooper that went off towards the end. Maverick Rastakiz. Rastahiz. Rastahiz. We have, we have various pronunciations. Some of them involve syllables. Some of them involve uh, pulling out your tongue. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was your name again? In order to pronounce it correctly, I would have to Pull out your tongue. <laughs> Zachary Wolf looking a little beat up. All right. Well, Mike Stockbill, winner of race one and race two. Can anyone stop him in race three? Dennis Johnson has the best chance. He is starting from pole position. Uh, actually, you know what? Thought here, Luciano Echazo is starting in second place. And we know Luciano has got some pace. If he can stay up at the front, he might have a chance of denying Mike Stoffmill the triple crown. I'll tell you who's really regretting that second race problem, though, is Sherman Ando. I think if you have a bad result, the second race is the worst place to have it because now... Number one, you've got a 20th on the board in race number two. And number two, you're starting from 20th in race number three. Which probably means not a great result here as well. You have not made Pusher T proud. You have not put numbers on the board. So what's the over-under here, Byron? Does Stop Mill get it done here in race number three? Well, I mean, he did last time. <laughs> I don't yeah, see... Yeah, but here's the here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's a better chance this time, and the reason is, last time, all the people who in theory could keep up with Stop Mill were back with him on the grid. Mm -hmm. This time, there's a couple at the front that might have the pace to do something. So it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be harder. I'm not saying I'm. I'm not saying saying to bet against it, but I do think this is gonna be a harder run through the field than race number two. Maybe. Josiah, the Volkswagens have not had a good result so far, so I am, I am, I am thinking there's something to my theory that the Volkswagen is not the car to be in. Could also just be that we have a bunch of guys in Volkswagens who were not fully prepared for the front wheel action.
So we get ready here. Uh, let's see here. What car is this? This is the Benjamin Leuchter Volkswagen, driven by Josiah Jerome. Number 33 car. And we are now pulling out of the pits. That is Dennis Johnson. That would be the Frederick Verviche Audi. Indeed it is. It's a shame the Volkswagens aren't maybe a little bit more competitive because one of my favorite um, one of my favorite touring car drivers, Rob Huff, was in a Volkswagen for part of this era. The Macau Master Bar. That sounds like a, quite a thing to be. Mm -hmm. I believe I, I could be mistaken, but I believe at least on four wheels, no one has more victories at Macau than Rob Huff. Not even uh, noted racing raceologist uh, Richard Ham Hampton. I mean, Richard Hammond went ended up upside down at Macau. Let's be real. That's true. In fact, James James May would probably actually be the one to win at Macau just by 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 retaining like not being upside down. Correct. By using the wreckage of others as a ramp. <laughs> well, no, I was thinking he'd just be too slow to to flip the car over. <laughs> Some say he's the Stig, but really, he's just Mike Stockmill. <laughs> Mike Stigmill. Mike Stiggington. <laughs> hey, look, there's an ambulance back there. The attention to detail in, in, in these tracks is sometimes very impressive. Not as impressive as Assetto Corsa, where, like, literally, if you zoom out on replays, you realize that there's stuff that they've actually coded into the game that you would never see while driving a car. <laughs> like, there's a... On Mount Panorama, Bathurst, there is a football field with Mount Panorama painted on it that you would never see from the car. That's pretty cool. But it is there. If you zoom out in the replay, you can find it. <laughs> the Mountains of Bananarama. So here we go. David Slute in the lead early on here. Interesting. Was it not a top? It was a top 12 reverse grid, but Slute. Oh, uh, but Slute must have just gotten a great start. Wow. Yeah, he was in the top 10, so good work by, good work by him. Chazo in second place and Tavelle in third. Who was the pole sitter? It was Dennis Johnson, who is down in seventh. What happened there? Stiff. Dennis, Dennis Johnson blew the start. Horribly by the looks of it. Alright, so Slute leads from Ichazo. Dalval in, th in third place. Richard Roche in fourth. Stop Bill Watch. 11th place. So he's up He's up one already. <laughs> Richard Roche in the fifth place. He's already passed Martin on fresh tires. Indeed. He, is, he has victimized Martin Edmonds. Richard Roche up into fourth place as he gets past Andrew D. Lachlan Nichols, Brody Steen, the two Aussies, eighth and ninth. Sherman Ando's up two spots, so he's, uh, he's on the charge. Watch for him to make some big moves. John Spriggs managed to move up seven places last race, so that is the bar for Sherman Ando. Sean Kenny, seventh place. We don't set the bar. We are the bar. Uh, I missed that tank. The uh, team to come back a couple weeks ago. No, no. But, uh, I mean, I I mean if they were trying if, to, they're trying if to if they're make gonna... uh, Castagnoli heal super heal. Yeah, but they always give up on giving Ke uh, Mr. Cesaro an actual singles push. So I mean, yeah, because he's a foreigner. You might as well just stick him back in the bar then, if you're not going to do anything with him as a single. They will do stuff with Sheamus as a single, I guess. Uh, I guess that would be the logic to keep him in split. 
He's now feuding with uh, McIntyre. Big Shamo. Slute, Ichazo, Delval, Richard Roche. Gunrunner in fifth place. Andrew D., Sean Kenny, Lachlan Nichols, Brody Steen. Mike Stobbill up to 10th. Martin Edmonds, 11th and 12th for James Butler. Dennis Johnson has had a terrible race three. He's down to 13th place. Having started on pole. Sean Kenny hanging in there in a battle with Brody Steen and Lachlan Nichols. Cars just everywhere right now. I mean, everybody's in a fight with everybody right now. <laughs> Things are real tight. Mike Stoppel has dropped down to 11th behind Martin Edmonds as we ride on board with the stick. Let me go ahead and say that Martin probably cheated, and I salute him for that. I mean, I, I ain't gonna complain. That's James Butler right behind Mike Stoppel. That's not a great place to be. James Butler can be very aggressive. And I imagine the front-wheel drive cars are only going to accentuate that. Martin Edmonds, Lincoln Co. Number 100 car. Oh, no! That is John Barker in the wall. Problems for Barker early. Two very solid races now backed up by... What is probably going to be a relatively disappointing third race right now, but he does have 16 minutes to try to make the comeback happen. John Spriggs up to 14th place. Trailing the Audi of Dennis Johnson. He's got the Volkswagen of Josiah Jerome on his tail. On board with the Mole. One of the Hondas off the track there. That was Serge Hendricks, judging by the fact that he's falling through the field. You should have a team between Slute and Mole. Slute Mole! Team Mole. I mean, it's, it's right it's right there. It works perfectly. Uh Andrew D getting past. Sean Kenny. And also the man who really wins out on this is the high Hyundai of Brody Steen, who takes them both and moves into si uh, seventh place, apparently. Sixth place. He's shown in seventh, but I think he's in sixth. There we go. There's the adjustment. He is ahead of Andrew D. David Slute still leading the way from Luciano Jazzo, Gerardo Delval, Zarai Garunian, Richard Roche, Brody Steen, Lachlan Nichols. Sean Kenny, Mike Stop Bills up to ninth place. The Alpha Romeo. Martin Edmonds, Andrew D. Looks like Andrew D may have gotten a punt. He is falling through the field. Now, the, prob the problem with my earlier thought that someone might be able to stop Mike Stopville from winning is the problem is David Slute. And I don't mean this to be insulting. David Slute appears to be a quality driver. He's up there. He deserves that leading spot. But it feels like the guys who could have stopped Stopville from winning, Ichazo, Gunrunner, are now stuck behind a slightly slower car and are not able to try to get a gap. <laughs> so that might help out the Mike Stopville comeback. <laughs> As Gunrunner moves past Ichazo into third place. Really good run for the Lincoln Co. team right now. Three of the top four repping the Lincoln Co. brand. It's just the Cupra of Luciano Ichazo breaking up the party. Mike Stopmill goes to the inside of Sean Kenny and will make that happen. That's eighth place. Richard DeRoche in the high Hyundai up to fifth place. Following him, it is Brody Steen and Lachlan Nichols, then Mike Stopmill. So the Aussies have got Stopmill to deal with now. He's going to go up over the down unders. Luciano Ichazo in the Tom Cornell Cupra. Second place at the moment. I mean, Slute and Garunian are not just both in Lincoln Coast. They're in the same Lincoln Coast. They're both racing as Elon Muller. <laughs> Which is very rude of them, because there's a car for uh, for Yvonne Muller's nephew, Jan uh, Yvonne Erlache, that they could have picked. That would have been even better. Tour 
touring car legend Yvonne Muller. I think has the most world titles in touring car history, actually. More uh, than Wayne Gretzky? Well, Wayne Gretzky is zero, so yes. Wow. Although I would argue that... Um, uh, why am I blank? Jose Maria Lopez is the most dynamic touring car driver in history. He won all but one world title that he competed in. Luciano Echazo going for the lead after a mistake by David Slute. And he's got it. So Cooper to the front. And I think Gunrunner may have also gotten past Slute as well. So it's Cooper followed by a trio of Lincoln Co's and a Hyundai in the top five. Looking back at Stop Bill, he's done. He's gotten through Lachlan Nichols. Brody Steen is next on his list. He gonna get you. Might. Brody, eh, Brody, Brody's a good driver. Might be able to hold him up for a while, though. And if Luciano Echazo and the Gunrunner can just get away, maybe, maybe, they can keep Mike Stopmill from the top step of the podium for a third time. I believe it when I see it. That's why I said maybe. Oh, Ichazo makes a mistake. Gunrunner goes for it. Slute's following him through. And it's a 1-2 for the Lincoln Co. once again. Ichazo down to third in the order. Still ahead of Delval and DeRoche. David Slute and his return to ESR competition is a man to watch in second place. Oh, three wide. Ichazo gets second place back from Slute. Almost got Garunny in as well. This is playing into the hands of, of Stop Bill, who is going to be like, yes, yes, let the hate flow through you and fight. <laughs> there we go. I'm getting, uh, combining the, the dark side of the force with the Stig. Mike Stop Mill is now Darth Stig. I suppose so. Works. Richard Roche going up the inside of uh, Gerardo Duval. Cannot get through this time. Mike Stoppel is in the background there. Hassling Brody Steen for sixth place. So Stoppel is in the leading train now. Down the inside of Brody Steen. You see it in the rear view of Richard Roche. And we bring you this riding on dick. <laughs> Overtake by Mike Stoppel. German Ando watch. He's up to 15th place, so he's cleared five spots. Two more, and he matches John Spriggs' total. Sean Kenny's been shuffled back to ninth place. Now fighting with, well, not really fighting. He's got about a two second gap to Martin Edmonds. Mike Stoppill looking to get past Richard DeRoche. And it looks like he will. Down the inside, and ahead he goes. Stop Mill into fifth. Brody Steen trying to make a run at him again. This is Richard DeRoche, so the Hyundai's doing a little teamwork to try to get back past Stop Mill. Not working at the moment. Sarai Grunian needs to get on it and get on it now, but he's only got about a half second gap to Luciano Echazo, who's under attack from David Slute. Delval is next on Stop Mill's hit list. Brody Steen takes the top Hyundai spot, moving past Richard DeRoche into sixth place. See, told you. DeRoche trying to get back past him. No team orders here in the Hyundai brand. Zarai Garunian leading the way from David Slu or Luciano Echazo, David Slute, Ger uh, Gerardo Daval, Mike Stockmill, Brody Steen, Richard Roche, Lachlan Nichols, Sean Kenny, Martin Edmonds. That is your top 10. Uh, pretty familiar top 10 to what we've been seeing pretty much most of the day. A couple of people are missing, though. Sherman Ando is further down the order. Uh, 
Uh, he's been a player to note. Like Stockdale gets past to Roche, or Del Val, pardon me, and is in to fourth place in the Alfa Romeo. Dun, 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 dun. I decree that Mike Stopnil is the only one driving an Alfa Romeo. Everyone else is driving. The, uh, every other Alfa Romeo is the Beta Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, let, let it be known. Beta Romeo guys, you, you guys get 80% more Eagle. Correct. You also get the patented uh, heart shape or uh, cross sh shaped uh, seat belts, which lift and separate. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to run you. Now got a second over Ichazo. Slute versus Stopmill. This is a new matchup. I don't think we've seen this one particularly to date. So I am very eager to see what happens here. And, I mean, I know what's probably going to happen, and it just did. Stop yep. and it goes down the inside in the third place. <laughs> Team Sloot Meal. Stop Bill the third. Next on his list is Ichazo. Ichazo's been feisty against Stop Bill in the past. We'll see if he can do anything. Or will, like Stop Bill, a proud Dutchman, be intimidated by the Dutch car of Tom Cornell? Or be soothed by the haunting tunes of Chris Cornell. Oh. You thinking Black Hole Sun, or where, where are we going with this one? Uh, probably Jesus Christ pose. Oh, a little contact there between Ichazo and Stopville, but I think that got him second place. Bit of a bump pass, but that's Touring Car 101. David Slute looking to get on the podium. His ESR return, trying to fight that spot off of Luciano Ichazo. Gun runner and stop mill out front. Looks like we've lost somebody. We started with 25 cars. I see only 24 cars, but I'm not sure who's missing. David Slute, or is it David Slute? Could be. See, I would think with a pronunciation like Slute, it's David, but uh, could be wrong. David, David. As Gerardo Duval is starting to fall back, so again, kind of adding to the idea of these Lincoln Co. cars do not treat their tires very well. He's lost out to both the Hyundai's of Brody Steen and Richard Roche in the last little bit. But Martin Edmonds is still ahead of James Butler, so they can't be that bad. <laughs> Looks like we've lost uh, Serge Hendricks and uh, Rastikids from this uh, race, judging by the fact that they are two and one lap down, respectively. We have a very odd battle going on for 20th place. John Barker versus Wayne Hutchison. I hope that gets a little bit of screen time. Sherman Nando is up to 12th place. He's had a hell of a comeback. Eight spots. John Spriggs, eat your heart out. And one of those spots was John Spriggs, who's in 13th. Dang. Looking to get past James Butler to get a ninth spot. And then Martin Edmonds, he could come back from 20th to 10th in this race. That would be very impressive. Stop Mills within a second of Garunian, but he's not really in attack zone yet. But he'll have two more laps to try to get the job done. Andrew D has had a rough race. He's down in 15th place. Dennis Johnson, who started on pole, is down to 16th now. Rough day. Steve Davidson. Another rough day. A lot, of, a lot of rough days here in the third race. I think uh, and, uh, overall mental and or physical exhaustion has played a part. Quite possibly. I mean, it, these cars actually are, are, are a workout to fight because you're, you're constantly fighting with them. Um, there's a reason that touring car racing in real life is, is very short. Uh, very low lap count. Very 
very little time in the car. It's not like GT racing where you go for like, you know, 24 hours of spa. You wouldn't do that in a touring car. <laughs> um, Lachlan Nichols. Well, also the tires went fast. Lachlan Nichols looking to get past Gerardo Del Val. So his fall continues as uh, Nichols' Honda looks to inch its way past. Chazo hanging on against Slute, and then the Hyundais are coming. Brody Steen and Richard Roche. There's the battle for the lead. Mike Stopmill on the tail of Zarai Garunian. Garunian is about to enter the... This could be the final lap, but maybe not. Tough maybe. call. We got a minute 42 left, which may or may not be enough time to get them around to the start finish line. I'll tell you who's really hoping it's the last lap. Sarai Garunian. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's going to work out for him, but we're going to see. We'll find out. Like I said, it's always a little bit hard to figure out where you are on this track. There's not a lot of, um, it's not a lot of visual markers. <laughs> if that makes any sense. I think we're towards the end of the lap. So I, I think we're going to get another lap. Find out. Stopmill may not need another lap. He's up the inside of Garunian there when the camera took went away to review Slute versus Ichazo. Looks like Garunian did hang on for the time being. 55 seconds to go. And I think we're approaching the start finish. We are. We're going to get another lap, Byron. Dun, 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 dun. Stop Mill on the hunt. He's got one lap to get the triple crown. Goes to the inside. Looking to make a move into turn one. High speed turn. There's the brakes. Stop Mill is through. Into the lead. Chase the high speed dude. Took him the longest though. This was the longest it took him to get to the lead. Oh god! Lachlan Nichols is off the track. <laughs> And there goes a, a valuable top 10 for the Aussie. Rejoining behind the Cupra of John Spriggs. Sherman Ando's had an incident, by the way. He's down to 17th place, so that, that beautiful compact drive may have really come to just about nothing. Sarai Garunian may still have a shot here. He's keeping with stop Bill. Would love to be only non-Dutchman to step up to the top spot of the podium. Further back, there's John Spriggs in the Cupra battling with Josiah Jerome, who's had a pretty decent third race, I must say. Coming through. It's up at 11th spot, 11th spot in that Volkswagen, which has not shown really a tremendous amount of pace around Slovakia ring. Right? Like Stop Bill's dad got 8 tenths of a lead over Garunian, now up to 9 tenths, back to 8. Sean Kenny on the tail of Richard DeRoche, looking to make a late charge here. Brody Steen, and, and Brody Steen has gotten past uh, David Slute. So Slute back to fifth. Still a very solid debut for him, or re-debut in ESR. And the checkered flag is out. Mike Stopmill is your triple crown winner here at the shakedown at Slovakia Ring. Ha cha cha. Zarai Garani in second, Luciano Ichazo in third, Brody Steen fourth place, followed by David Slute, Richard DeRoche comes home in set six, Sean Kenny, Gerardo Naval, Martin Edmonds, James Butler top ten. Welcome aboard, sir. Josiah Jerome, John Spriggs, Lachlan Nichols, Andrew D 14th, followed by Dennis Johnson, Scott Nick, uh, Ezekiel Sherman Ando, Steve Davidson, Nito Vili. Wayne Hutchinson and John Barker come across the line in 20th and 21st place. And the man bringing up the rear in 22nd, Zachary Wolf. It, he's in the Tom Cornell liveried car, but he is not Tom Cornell. I didn't I didn't realize there was a second one. That's Aurelian Panis. Uh, 
that would be Aurelian Panis's card. Interesting note, Aurelia Panis is the son of Olivier Panis, which comes into play because Mike Stockmill's racing team, I do believe, if I'm not very much mistaken, and he can correct me in the comments below, is actually run by Olivier Panis. This begs the question, Mike Stockmill, why are you not in the number 21 Cupra, sir? It's Aurelian Panis's car. It's Tom Cornell's sponsorship. It's the Tom Cornell car with your with your boss's son. I feel like this is a thing that really should have happened. Big pileup is uh as oh it looks like Wayne Hutchison may have run out of gas. Uh, did he get across the line? I hope he did. Uh, would have only fallen one spot if he didn't, I suppose. But um, there are your final results. Mike Stockmill leading the way home to a triple crown victory here today. Zerai Gruny and Luciano Achazo on the podium. Some top racers getting some good results. Couple of bad results. Andrew D can't be looking at that 14th terribly highly. Looks like Wayne Hutchison did make it across the line before running out of gas. Bringing it home in 21st place ahead of Zachary Wolf, Rastic Hits, and Hendricks out of the race here. And before this race even started, we'd lost Michael Kral, Simone Mar uh, Samal Marquez, Cristiano Pinheiro, Mauricio Delgado, Mr. Ob uh, Obravovich, whose first name we didn't get. And that brings us to the end here. And Liam. Byron, how did you enjoy the touring cars? Uh, that was pretty good. I enjoyed it. Very competitive. Everybody was, uh, you know, keeping stuff together and pushing people around, and I liked it. See you next time for the, I believe, opening of the actual season. I will quickly pull up the calendar. Because this was a shakedown race, so I believe we have... I believe that we have uh, a more conventional track. I mean, I love Slovakia Ring. I want to make that clear. My ha my hatred for Slovakia Ring is purely from a commentary point of view of trying to figure out where some people are. Um, but uh, I do actually really, really like the track. Just pulling up the ESR page on Race App here. If you're not on Race App, you should check that out. It's an uh, excellent little tool. Uh, WC... TCR Winter Series round. Oh, no, this was round one. Okay, so this counted. Interesting. Okay. Uh, Watkins Glen is next up. That's going to be really fun. Oh. That's going to be fun. I might actually have to race in that one. I love Watkins Glen. It's a track I've raced at in real life. And I kind of want to see what race room has done with it, to be honest. So might do a wild card entry. We'll find out. Um. It looks like they did combine scoring here, so uh, kind of bizarrely, it looks like... I mean, Stop Bill in first place, followed by Zarai Garunian, Brody Steen, Luciano Chazzo, Lachlan Nichols, Sean Kenny, Martin Edmonds, and Gerardo Daval are tied. Then it's Richard DeRoche and, Dev and David Slute, your top 10. So that'll be fun. The shakedown was at Twin Ring Motegi. I see, I see. I think maybe Martin just forgot to delete the um, the uh, the uh, why is my brain not working the 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 shakedown part from the on tap channel maybe that's what threw me off. Uh, podiums were Stop Mill Grunian and Steen, Stop Mill Nichols and Steen, and Stop Mill Grunian and Ichazo. So Steen and Gr and Grunian got two podiums. Stop Mill of course with the triple win. So they look like they'll be. The biggest challengers, anyways. And before that whole thing started, I also wanted to figure out if we'll see any cars that we didn't see today eventually in this in this series. So I'm pulling up the WTCR 19 section. And nope, everything is accounted for unless we're allowing the 18 cars, in which case there might... I stress might uh, be a Peugeot 308. Kind of hoping that there are a Peugeot option, but we'll see. And with that, we call this one a finish. Hope you guys enjoy this series. It's, I think, going to be a load of fun. And, of course, get ready for the ESR Enduro, which is coming up in a little bit of time. 
And feel free to check out the action from the Nurburgring from the DT Challenge, which should be up on the channel as well as the 3D Speed from Zenvort.